Hey, assalamu alaikum everybody, hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, so I'm realizing, you know, uh, I'll post about this later, but I, I was really affected by this incident, so I decided to wait instead of posting it right away. Though, and I mentioned this, I mentioned Avatar last time, you know, an interesting thing about the movie Avatar is that he had to do video logs of uh, what he was experiencing and as he was changing, and I thought that was really cool because I was like, hey, I can relate to that. But the important thing was he did it right away, and so, uh, and I just saw a movie while, I'm seeing a movie while I'm doing these because it takes time uh, between the postings, which has to do with memory, and so I'll talk about that in my last post as well. What does it mean about memory and remembering uh, incidents and when they actually happen? Um, anyways, um, uh, car crash. So I live on the Corniche, which I think is Italian. I, I don't remember its origin, but it's, it basically means this big, large street. Uh, actually, I don't know what it means because there's a Corniche in, uh, in Cairo as well. But basically in, uh, in colloquial Egyptian... Arabic here in Alexandria, it means the main street which runs right along the Mediterranean Sea. So I live there. I've taken pictures, by the way, of all my house, uh, my my apartment. I'll be posting those up, inshallah, so you can see what it looks like. But it's a very dangerous place because people drive very quickly at night. And uh, now I, I put the date, I think, the 27th of January. It happened during this week sometime. I'm not sure when. But I just heard... <laughs> And I, I had been watching, I still remember, um, Al, in a movie with Al Pacino. Uh, you know, just you need to watch movies in English every once in a while. And especially with the Arabic subtitles on channels like NBC and NBC Max, it helps your Arabic as well. And so I was watching this movie called 88 Minutes. And, you know, I was at the edge of my seat. And it's about this guy who's trying to kill Al Pacino. I, I don't even remember the details, but it was just it had a lot of suspense. And so I'm getting this and then I see this car crash. And I don't even know what 911 is in Alexandria. Uh, I later found out it's 123. I asked my roommate. But I, I come out, I look outside my window, and two cars had, had hit each other. I think they were two black cars, and it looked like nice cars. And a lot of people speed. I mean, a lot of people speed on this. On this. I don't know if you would call it a highway. Uh, we can't cross it. We have to use tunnels because it's that dangerous. This is the road again. I think I've spoken about it before. Where people have been killed crossing the street. It's very dangerous. Um, I went out and it was crazy. You had maybe 50 people, maybe 100 people around. All the cars stopped and everybody just ran to these uh, vehicles. I don't even know how like emergency uh, response was supposed to get in. Now you have those, uh, it's called the the jaws of, I, I don't remember what it's called, but basically the fire department has something that cuts open a car to, uh, during these ex after these accidents so that they can rescue people. Well, these people were opening the doors. I mean, uh, they must have had an adrenaline rush, but you had like four or five people and they're just pulling and you could see the car it's shaking because they're trying to rescue people. There was a person who was laying on the floor. They were just laying on the floor on their back. And another person was carrying this this uh, lady or young young woman, I guess you could say. And uh, I heard the emergency response uh, team come in, and it was like two or three minutes after, which I was surprised about. That's pretty quick, uh, in my opinion. And they were able to get through. There were some stupid things, but I mean, I have a bird's eye view, so I can tell like the best way to go. It's not as easy for them, but it was just uh, yeah, I was really affected by it. And then the next day. And there, there's a gym uh, downstairs where uh, my roommate works out, and he told me that um, basically one of the gym guys heard of, heard it, heard the big crash, went out there, and found out that four people, four people died, uh, believe it or not, in crash right outside my uh, apartment building. You know, I wanted to rush down and help them, and maybe this is just bad of me as a human being, but there were like 50 people already there. And so it told me something about the society. Um, I don't know if that would happen in the U.S. You know, you have 50 people, everybody stopped. Now, some people might think, oh yeah, in Egypt, you know, everyone's trying to butt into your business and get into all the nitty-gritty details. But at the same time, it's a care, uh, it's a concern for other people. And 
I thought it was really sweet how everybody rushed there and they were helping them out. I mean, that's, you know, people cared. And though some people might have been talking, you know, there was like a, a little car crash on Cheddar Delta, Delta Street, which is close to my house. People were talking and they were getting in a fight and you could hear everybody commenting, you know, so, you know, people love to talk. But, I mean, they help you and... Uh, and I'm generalizing, but it seems like uh, people help more in times of need, even when they're strangers, like you'd see in a small town. Alexandria, you might be surprised, but I think it's a pretty small city. I mean, you see the same people every uh, once in a while. But now, granted, I'm only in, the, in one area in it, and I don't uh, travel much outside, but yeah, poor people passed away. Or may God have mercy on their souls. Um, I've been talking with some people, and actually some cab drivers too, and uh, uh, they tell me this, and I heard the same thing in, in Damascus as well, that uh, cab drivers and microbus drivers uh, will drink, especially at night, or they'll take drugs, and he's like, you can tell, one of them was telling me, he's like, you can tell just by the way they're talking, it, it'll sound no it won't sound normal, it'll sound slurred uh, at night, uh, a lot of them, uh, th this is just what I hear, they'll practice uh, the with prostitution and uh, be involved in that stuff, so you have to be careful at night, especially, I know I was on guard in Damascus, when you get into these cabs, or, you know, just be aware, you know, look at how they're talking, if they're talking weird, just tell them, drop me off right here, because maybe they're on drugs, maybe they drink, uh, maybe they're involved in something illegal, uh, I mean, everybody's involved in something illegal in one way or another, and it's a lot more here, I guess, but basically it's not safe, and uh, it's scary that they're just trying to get customers, so they'll be going very fast. And you have this happen. You also have the young the young guys who will be driving fast and racing each other. And I just saw that a few days ago, also on the Corniche. So, yeah. And if you thought that was a rare experience, uh, there was another crash just uh, a week or two ago. Uh, same exact place. And I live on a on the Corniche, and I'm sure tons of accidents. And one of my teachers told me that every single morning she comes to class on the Corniche, she sees a car crash every single day. That's not normal. Now, maybe in a big city, I don't know. I I'm not from a big city in the U.S. Maybe it's like that as well. But um, there's definitely a problem. Uh, people don't drive in lanes, and uh, traffic laws aren't really followed. But yeah, so it's it's dangerous. And you know, if you do come, just uh, be aware and uh, be on guard.